So now I'm going to clean up this engine case half using some acetone and a Scotch-Brite pad like this one. Now it's important to note that I'm going to be using the Scotch-Brite pad only for the initial pass to remove any additional debris from the case. You don't want to use this on a final pass because this can leave uh, fibers in the engine that can then clog up oil passages and cause bearings to fail. So there is a significantly less dirty engine block now. All right, so I've gotten most of the components of the engine to a somewhat clean state where I've removed the majority of the grime and grit and just general plant matter and other detritus that was inside the engine and on the engine parts. So to work on the oil cooler, the first thing I'm going to do is take some compressed air and just blast it out. Uh, to try to get any loose debris out of the out of this cooler. After a few wash cycles, the turpentine was coming out uh, almost clear. It still had a little bit of yellow color to it, probably from a mixture of rust and uh, some some more oil debris that was left over. But for the most part, the oil uh, is com or the the solvent is coming out of the oil uh, cooler very clean and clear. Alright, so now I have four cylinders that have been honed to what I would consider a reasonable degree of uh, a consistency. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do in the reassembly process is install the new rings on the pistons. I've already installed rings on one piston here. You can see these are installed. Uh, they're compressible. They fit well in the grooves. I have the oiler ring installed as well. So I'm going to show you how to do that on these other three pistons as well. What I found is that these pistons, which are aftermarket pistons that were put in by a previous engine builder, do not actually fit, or at least the skirts, don't fit into any of these cylinders, whether it's the short cylinders uh, or the long skirted cylinder from the other engine. Uh, however, this uh, fourth cylinder, which is uh, looks to be exactly the same vintage and, and model as uh, the other short cylinders, uh, actually does fit all of the pistons. And the reason I, what I figured out is these pistons are actually, since they're from a rebuild kit, uh, from a previous rebuild that someone else did, they are 77.5 millimeter pistons. They're upsized to account for any honing that's been done on the cylinders, whereas these are original 77 millimeter cylinders. Now this one's kind of an oddball because it does actually fit. I suspect this is very, this one's especially worn out compared to all the others, uh, which makes it so that it can actually slide in. So I'm going to actually end up over honing these uh, other cylinders. I bought some really coarse grit honing stones. I'm going to go over uh, and run these really hard and hone them out until they 
uh, can comfortably fit all of the uh, pistons skirts into the into the cylinders and uh, once I've done that I'm going to go over them again with the fine honing stones to get any large grooves out. I've been all around the globe trying to protect your soul. We are heroes tonight. We will fly above the sky. We are heroes tonight. So after a monumental amount of drilling, I did actually manage to open this up all the way to the point that the uh, piston can be slipped in and out of it reasonably easily. So now I'm going to be installing the crank and camshaft back into the engine case. There it is. There's the click. 32 foot-pounds into the multiplier. So this, uh, this gland nut should now theoretically be fully tightened.